everyone, it's Karen. So I wanted to make a video with my top nine nonfiction recommendations for Shorty September. And I would actually love if you guys made like a response video with your nine favorite nonfiction books that you would recommend to other people that you could do for Shorty September. So if you don't know about Shorty September, I will link videos below, but it's basically um, a time when you read really short books for an entire month and it's amazing. And it's my favorite time the entire year. The first one is Yoke and it's by Jessamine Stanley. Uh, Jessamine is amazing. She's basically a yoga teacher and she talks about how yoga is basically for rich white ladies and um, she's trying to reclaim it and and try and educate people on how it needs to basically be broadened and include more types of bodies especially since like it came from India and we are just like stealing it from them. She is black, she is also fluffy and um, the book is about just making sure that everyone is included um, and also that your size does not impact if you can do yoga or not, or if you can be an active human being or not. Next one is You Learn by Living by Eleanor Roosevelt. This is just basically, basically her kind of meditating on life. And basically I just wanted to underline the crap out of this when I read it, just because I feel like she was such a wise woman and there's just, ugh so much I loved about this book. The next book is Tell Me How It Ends, an essay in 40 questions by Valeria Lucelli. Um, this is about a woman who spent time basically learning about undocumented children and the questions that they were asked um, basically on the border. I can't remember if she actually worked as like a border patrol person. I think she did. Um, and it really dives deep into like basically being able to have empathy for the children and the people that are trying to cross the border um, between Mexico and the United States and like actually understanding that this is not like they're they would not they would not do this basically this is not their first choice they would not come if they did not have to um, and I think that it helps people have more empathy for them and it's also heartbreaking and it's horrible and next one is also horrible but ugh, completely different and not quite as crazy this one is no place to go by leslie Lowe. it is about uh basically how there's no public toilets or well there are public toilets but um about how it can be a huge problem for people with children or for people with disabilities when like they want to use a park or a public space and there's no access to toilets and um that in the united states is something that you don't really notice until you have a problem and then you realize it and so basically it's kind of another one of these universal design situations where you don't realize that there's a problem until you have a disability or something like that and she's trying to educate people on like you don't have to be a parent with young children or like you don't have to have a disability like i'm trying to tell you now like this is a problem and here's all the reasons why um it talks about like bathroom design too like the number of bathroom facilities that are in a building um men compared to women and it's just like really really interesting um yeah definitely something um just regarding accessibility i would say next one is something i read before it came out it's upstream by mary oliver um i'm not really into poetry but i discovered mary oliver through this book and this is a book of essays and poetry she is just like a woman that I feel deeply connected to as far as like our life outlook. She's deeply connected to nature. She's deeply connected obviously to reading and writing and just like she talks about how she would go into the woods as a kid with a backpack full of books just to like escape life and there's just so much in here that I just like I just loved reading and I underlined so much and I think it's really good like essay poetry combo how to resist amazon and why basically amazon is horrible this book tells you why i'm still here 
uh, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness by Austin Channing Brown. So I heard about this one long before it came became popular because the author basically came to a local bookstore and I accidentally like was there when she was there. Like basically the event uh, sold out of books and so she came back at a later date to sign a whole bunch of books. And so she was there with her son and her kid um, and I was just very curious like who is she and what is this book? And so I later bought it. Um, they didn't have any more signed ones because she only signed like enough for the people that attended the event. But I did technically see her. I was in the same bookstore as her. Um, anyway, this book is so good and one that you should read like at least once a year I would say. It is about her experience as a black woman and specifically as like a black Christian and uh, the different ways that she encounters racism in her life, um, especially in, in organizations like workplaces where they're like, oh, like, please help us be anti-racist. And then they're racist as crap. Um, yeah, I just felt like it was really good to hear for her perspective and kind of like, not necessarily get called out on things, but just be more aware of myself as a white person and how I interact with other people. The next one is The Body Is Not An Apology by Sonia Renee Taylor. She has a newer version of this book that came out and then she also has done like a journal and stuff like that that pairs with it. This is basically on just loving yourself and loving your body um, without abandon, just like, you know, whatever. Being fluffy and still trying to be healthy. And just embracing who you are and what size you are and what color skin you have and all that stuff. And just like almost doing that as like an act of resistance or something like that to be like, I am fully who I am. I'm comfy in my own skin. I am here and you cannot make me go away. Loved it. Finally, last book I have is We Are the Weather by Jonathan Safran Four. Now, this is not one of my favorite books. It is a shorty. It's actually smaller than you would think because of all the notes at the end it is 224 pages. Um, I can just give you a summary if you want, so you don't have to read this, but if you bought a shorty, this is, you know, one that has changed my life, I would say. Well, um, basically this book says that people, this is my summary, so you don't have to read it if you don't want to. People are really focused on climate change and on improving the world to try and reduce or s slow down climate change. Um, people are really fixated on recycling and not using straws or using reusable straws or like there's all these things that people are like, you know, doing. And there's a lot of actually bigger things we could be doing. And so he talks about the three things with the highest um, effect size, or that's just how I'm wording it. I'm pretty sure that what he said is something similar. So those are number one, don't fly so often. Now here's the thing, especially during COVID, which by the way, I met him right before COVID uh, came to Michigan. That's a story for another day. Um, most people are not like thinking about flying. Like either one, you travel for work, which you have no control over if you're going to fly for not or fly or not. And two, um, yeah, you travel for vacations, but like how many vacations do people actually go on? And like most people are not actively planning a vacation. Although I feel like I am constantly planning a vacation. So maybe that's why. Anyway, second thing you can do is you can not have kids or have fewer kids. Um, and again, as he says, like if you are doing a book event and you're looking into the audience and there's all these people, how many of them are actively like, hmm, should I try for a child? Not very many. <laughs> um, and in addition to not very many people who are actively thinking, should I have a child? That is a huge thing for you to take away from someone just because of the climate. I don't know. It's another way to control women's bodies. Anyway, um, but the other thing that has a huge, huge impact um, is basically your diet. And um, so he advocates for a vegan diet. However, he also recognizes 
that not everyone is going to want to be vegan and so he kind of advocates for slowly going in a vegan direction um which basically um I just had a conversation with someone recently and they are changing their diet because basically on the internet we pulled up like what harms the environment the most I think like basically the carbon footprint of different foods or whatever and like beef uses so much energy to create like a pound of beef or whatever so the person I spoke with is giving up beef and so like that's kind of what he's advocating for make small changes okay you already don't eat meat or don't eat beef what else can you give up um you're already vegan okay awesome but what about palm oil or is that what it's called anyway right just like look at your choices look at food waste look at how food um how you deal with food and how you could alter that relationship with food to change the planet so anyway, those are my nine nonfiction books uh, that I think would be amazing for Shorty September. Please let me know yours either with a video response or in the comments. I would love to hear what shorties I need to read. Thank you guys so much and I will see you later.